Cushman and Wakefield. I will call them the real estate company. I want to flatter the guy who's with me. He says, or they say, that as many as 5,000 stores will close this year. That will be up by 25% from last year. Bob Knackle is back with us, investment sales chairman of in, uh, New York Investment Sales at Cushman and Wakefield. Welcome back, Bob. It's good to see you again. Good to see you, Stuart. That's a terrible report on the state of the bricks and mortar retail industry. What's going on? Well, bricks and mortar retail is definitely in a transformational stage, no doubt about it. <laughs> That's putting it mildly, isn't it? 5,000 stores to close this year, up 25% from last year. This is going to change the landscape. It's going to change the way America looks, isn't it? He certainly will, Stuart. And as we discussed last time, I think the, a lot of those retail stores and retail space generally is going to be repurposed. I think that today, if you look at next day delivery, that's so 1990s now. It's delivery within a few hours, so yeah. distribution facilities are going to be needed. We see a lot of demand from uh, companies that uh, are in the business of delivering products, looking for uh, facilities closer to urban districts. So, oh, you think that's the repurposing of shopping malls? It, the suburban areas, which are the well, sort of if you look at, at shopping malls, we talked about that last time as well. And I think if you look at malls, they're generally very, very well located near public transportation, big pieces yep, of land. That's true. That's true. Those, those malls can be rezoned. We can have construction of other types of, of uses on that land. Um, well, you've got to be optimistic. A man like you, Cushman and Wakefield, you've got to be optimistic because you're trying to sell some of this real estate, aren't you? Absolutely, and that's why the, the optimism that we're seeing in the sales market not today sell is it very to positive. Me. No, uh, come on. Optimism in the sales department? Come on. Absolutely. That implies that the retail real estate market has hit bottom. Well, it's not just retail, Stuart. I think that, that the retail market is trying to find its... Uh, its stabilization point, but we see activity in the office sector uh, picking up land, the land market, particularly which has been in a, a doldrums for the past uh, year to year and a half. We're seeing more activity in land now, so there has been a tangible shift over the last two or three months. You're trying hard, Bob Knackle. I always try hard. hard. Let it. me ask you this: Supposing there is out on the outskirts of New York City, in the suburbs, there's a mall. It used to be a thriving mall, but they've lost their two anchor department stores. That mall used to be worth, let's say, for the sake of argument, 100 bucks per square foot per year rent, right? Right. 100, what is it now? It's tough to say. It really, Come on. It really depends. Is it 90? Is it 80? Is it 50? Values have fallen. It hasn't gotten down to the point where it's 60. 50. It's probably down 20% on average, I would say. Whoa. But I think what we'll look at, communities want those properties to be generating tax revenue. Sure. Communities will rezone those properties. You'll see construction of uses that are, are really needed. Like, um, But it won't bring as much money back to the community, will it? If you, if you fill them with new churches, for example, or office, uh, you know, No, I'm talking about companies. uses like assisted living, um, things like that where... Uh, you can turn the a shopping mall into a. No, I'm saying you demolish the mall. You build new buildings on that site with a higher density because the communities will allow higher density to stimulate economic activity. If you can create the right incentives for the private sector, the private sector will do whatever you want them to do. A huge price cut is one extraordinary incentive, as I think you'll agree. That is. Yeah. So it's not it's not 100 down to 80 bucks per square foot. It's down to 60, isn't it? Not, no, not necessarily. I think that's, that's too bullish. In, in Manhattan, according to our retail department, retail rents, depending on the neighborhood, are down only 2% to a maximum in yeah, well, the, the mid, uh, mid that, You can't count Manhattan like any other place. It's just not the same. You know, Bob, every time you come on, I give you a hard time. I'm always skeptical about this uh, valuations, but you keep coming back for more. Absolutely. Well, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in the commercial real estate sector, and I'm also a believer that the market is always cyclical. There are good times and bad, and we've been through some very bad times. The, uh, the last recession we went through was difficult, but not nearly as bad as the recession we went through during the SNL crisis in the early 90s. Oh, I remember but, that one. But we're going through a little bit of an adjustment now, but because there hasn't been a catalytic event like a stock market crash or a housing market bubble. This is going to be a very, very soft correction, and I think that it's, we're really starting to come out of it already. Bob Knackle, Amazon is your catastrophic event. <laughs> That's what <laughs> it is. But you're all right. Bob Knackle from Cushman & Wakefield. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks. I do appreciate it.